Welcome to this bonus episode of Story District Presents. In season one, we brought you a story by Chris Wade about his quest to become a father. So my wife sent me down the basement because apparently that's where we collect semen samples in my house. <laughs> and, uh, and I wasn't upset because I'd worked under these conditions before. If you haven't heard that story, go back and listen to the Divine Intervention episode. During our interview, I asked Chris how his wife felt about him telling this story. So, as I recall, your wife was not in love with you telling this story. Is that true? No, she was. She was. She was okay with, with that, it. She yeah. wasn't uncomfortable with it. No, I think she wanted to be there for the um, the first story I, I did, which was the um, the, the deal. You know. The dildo one. The dildo. Everybody seems to remember the dildo. Well, we thought you might want to hear Chris's dildo story, which for the record is about a woman he met before he married his wife. Here's that story. Everything I knew about Dayton came from a book of tried and trusted pickup lines that my two older brothers passed down to me when I reached puberty. And they contain some classic lines like, if you were a fruit, you'd be a fine apple. And let me tie your shoe, because I'd hate for you to fall for somebody else. The one that I always wanted to use was, my love for you is like diarrhea. I can't hold it in. But here I was, uh, 30 years old, I was single, I was a police officer, I had no kids, and I was living in a two-bedroom English basement apartment in Adams Morgan. I was looking for love and settling for lust. <laughs> then she happened. I was driving through a supermarket parking lot. She walked in front of my car. I smiled and waved, and she smiled and waved back. She looked like Halle Berry which later became one of my claims to fame. She stopped at a nearby bus stop, so I got out, walked over, and introduced myself. Hello, I'm Chris. Hi, Chris, I'm Dee. Nice to meet you, Dee. You like ice cream? What girl doesn't like ice cream? Pick up line number 13. <laughs> we should go grab some this weekend. And that Saturday, I found myself sitting across from her in an ice cream parlor in Old Town Alexandria, wondering if the baby was going to have my eyes or her eyes. <laughs> Shortly after that, uh, I gave up that $4.50 a month, two-bedroom English basement with utilities included in off-street parking <laughs> to move in her efficiency. But not long after moving in together, I realized that she and I were meant for other people. <laughs> you see, we, we both had trust issues, the kind that brought out the worst in two people in a relationship. Like the one time I came home late and she accused me of cheating, so she cut the ass out of all my underwear. <laughs> It wasn't always her. I thought she was fooling around with this guy at her job, so I peed in the armpits of her blouse and let it dry, so when she perspired at work, she smelled like piss. Now, at the time, I thought that was real ingenious. But today, I realized that was just wrong. <laughs> Then came the uh, blue period, where we went weeks with no eye contact, no communication, verbal or physical. And then out of nowhere, she asked me to give her a ride to the store. You know, I was so excited we were back on speaking terms, I jumped at the opportunity. Um, she ran in the store and ran back out smiling and jumped in the car, and she was holding this brown paper bag, and, and protruding from the top of the bag was this dildo. But not just any dildo. <laughs> It's like she ran in there and said, uh, let me get the shack. <laughs> so on our way back to the uh, efficiency, 
I couldn't help but notice out the side of my eye this little smirk on her face as she embraced it like it was a loaf of French bread. And my jealousy turned to straight rage because I realized she just used me to take her to pick up her rubber lover. I pulled over, I grabbed the dildo, the bag ripped, I jumped out the car, and my plan was to break it over my knee right then and there. But what I didn't realize is they, uh, they use a different kind of rubber for uh, dildos. It was extremely firm, yet smooth. By now, she's out the car on my back. People are yelling stuff in the background. Uh, leave her alone. C call the police. Is that a dick? <laughs> Finally, it snapped in two, and there I stood in the middle of Adams Morgan at 4 p.m. on a Saturday <laughs> with these balls in my right hand and this shaft in my left. Our relationship has spiraled completely out of control. A breakup was imminent. And I was scared to death, because I knew what had to be done. So I proposed. I know, I know, it sounds crazy. But we were on the verge of breaking up, and I could not let that happen. So I loved a Hail Mary. Desperate times call for desperate measures. Let's pick up line number 911. She said yes. So we decided on a, a destination wedding and we got married at the uh, Little White Chapel in Vegas. Cost me uh, $150 for the uh, marriage license, limo, and a copy of the VHS tape. And then three weeks later, we got it annulled. It cost me $600. That's four weddings. I'm sharing with my buddy that I was thinking about going to this speed dating event to get over her, and he looked at me and said, speed dating? Didn't you uh, just do that? <laughs> he summed it up by saying, you know why you have so much bedroom company? Because you, you don't know how to have living room company. He said, as the quality of your living room company increases, the quantity of your bedroom company will decrease. That was my moment of clarity, because he was right. There was only one person in my life who I knew how to have living room company with, and that was my best friend. Uh, she and I had been doing that since day one. We enjoyed living room company at her parents' house, at my parents' house, and here it is going on almost 30 years later, and we still enjoy each other's living room company. And along the way, we managed to get married and have two kids who join us in the living room these days. <laughs> Sure, I've had my share of uh, toxic relationships, and I'm almost certain there's a video floating around of me with, and Adams Morgan with these balls and that shack shaft. <laughs> but it was worth it. Because in the end, I found my soulmate, and my love for her is like diarrhea. <laughs> I can't hold it in. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> That's it for this bonus episode of Story District Presents. Thank you so much for listening. If you enjoyed this episode, please subscribe, leave a review, tell your friends, and most importantly, keep listening. Visit our website, storydistrict.org, to find pictures and links related to this episode. And while you're there, get tickets to one of our live shows, pitch a story of your own, sign up for a class, or hire our fantastic consulting team for your business or organization. Story District Presents is supported in part by funding from the D.C. Commission on the Arts and Humanities. Our show is produced by Lizzie Peabody, Ronald Young Jr., Alana Nevins, Nick Hill, Tim St. Clair, and Jackson Bierfeld. I'm Amy Sedman, and this is Story District Presents. We'll see you next time. <laughs>